Every one of you have a Haiku page to use for your classroom. Today we're going to be talking about Haiku standardization. The reason why we are standardizing our procedures is because by standardizing our Haiku pages, we will streamline and organize our information and procedures. This will increase students' ease of use and limit the amount of confusion they may have while downloading, completing, and turning in assignments. We are a one-to-one -one school. Every student has access to their own personal laptop and the internet. This means that as many assignments and tasks as possible should be available digitally, even if they are completed in class. We are professionals. A confusing classroom page with inconsistent formatting, unclear directions, missing links or files in the wrong format, is just as problematic as giving students an assignment and not providing the proper materials or directions to carry out the assignment. We all know a well-designed page when we see one. There's a reason why companies try to mimic the design of Twitter, Facebook, and Google. Here are some standardization proposals that we have discussed as a staff. When you are organizing your lessons, units, and projects, make sure your units and projects are numbered and in chronological order, or in the order that they are meant to be completed. As you can see on this biology page, we have our units all in order in the way that they are meant to be learned. However, assignments, tests, and resources should not be located on the left-hand side of the page. These assignments should be on the assignments page, which we'll talk about a little later. List lessons and activities in the order that they are meant to be completed. Since this is a teacher page, you see that there is a teacher answer key that is also located, but you also have pages in Haiku that only you can see as a teacher, but can be hidden from students. If you need help with this, please let us know. If you have other resources related to a project or unit, list them on the right-hand column of the page. This way they'll be out of the way of the directions and the other procedures that students are supposed to be looking at, and the resources will all be in one place. Furthermore, in order to prevent clutter and to compartmentalize your lessons in organized formats, use a lesson delivery site such as Nomia or Educanon to keep resources and activities organized rather than scattered about your Haiku page. To learn more about Nomia and Educanon, this will be in a separate lesson. This way, each lesson will just show up as a link on your assignments page. Students can download assignments from the Nomia Lesson Hub, which can include links, files, videos, and resources for that assignment, and easily submit them to your Dropbox per your directions. Students want details about each assignment. Just remember the five W's. Who is doing the assignment? Is it individual or in groups? If it's a group assignment, who is responsible for submitting work? Describe what the assignment is. What is the student doing? When is it due? Is it meant to be completed at home or in class? Where are the resources and materials for this assignment? Why is the activity being assigned? What is being learned? How will the assignment impact or contribute to a larger project or concept being learned? This is the assignments page on your Haiku. Here you have all of your assignments listed when they are due. One problem with Haiku is that if you want to grade something in Haiku, you have to include an assignment, even if it's something that your students don't actually have to submit. 
For example, let's say that your students are doing a Socratic seminar. A Socratic seminar is a conversation that your students have with each other and they don't submit um, a piece of paper or a document. Therefore, you have to create an assignment for your Socratic seminar, but there's nothing to turn in. This could be a point of confusion for your students, so this is something that you'll want to clarify with them, that it is located on the assignments page so they may get a grade for the, this assignment, but that it's not necessarily something that they need to submit to the Dropbox. Also, students have requested that for the assignments page, you need to put detailed information on what to do for the assignment and how that assignment relates uh, to the project and the unit that you are currently learning. It's going to ask you for related standards when you are editing the assignment description. So you include your standards that are related to that assignment. And then in the details page, it allows you to include a detailed description, which can include links uh, and all sorts of attachments that you can use. And make sure that you include uh, the due date. Here's a couple of other standards related to the files that you're going to be uploading to Haiku. For media, make sure that audio is available as an mp3 file and that any video should be available as an mp4 file so students can refer back to them outside of class. All of these devices or anything that the students are using should be uh, accessible uh, or downloadable. Now this doesn't include Chromebooks, uh, but it does include students that are using MacBooks. Also, for uh, further instruction, when you are creating a video or choosing an instructional video, make sure that instructional videos should be between 5 and 15 minutes. Anything over 15 minutes is usually overkill and after that amount of time, students are either going to be bored with the video or they're not going to be listening to the instruction, they're going to be tuning it out. So any video over 15 minutes is probably not the best one to use for class. If you have a longer video that needs to be edited down, uh, I can show you how to do that in uh, iMovie on your MacBook computers. Be mindful of your file formats. Convert to a PDF file for uneditable documents such as reading excerpts. Use Google Docs or Wikispaces for editable student documents, but be mindful of privacy issues. In your planning, be very, very clear on how you want students to open files and programs, format their work, and save their work. If you do this, it will make your life a lot easier. Try to avoid duplication of information in your haiku. For example, if an assignment is added on the assignments page, it automatically adds that assignment to your haiku calendar. Therefore, there's no need to add another event because the same assignment to the calendar because then it will show up twice. All class assignments and announcements are on your haiku calendar. There is no need to have a calendar on your class's main page as everyone automatically has a calendar page on Haiku. There's no need to have two calendars. Regarding communication, we're going to use Remind, formerly Remind 101, to send non-assignment related announcements to parents and students via free text message and email rather than posting announcements on Haiku. Student and parent phone numbers will be collected at open house and on the first day of school. Grading expectations. All assignments and graded deliverables turned in during a typical week should have grades posted in Haiku no later than Sunday at 8 p.m. Now, of course we're not going to, you know, go after you with pitchforks if you don't get your grades in on time. But if you make time for yourself to grade your work at a certain time every week and you get your grades completed in a timely manner, your students will be happier, your staff will be happier, and you should be happier too.
Project grade should not be delayed by no more than one week after the project was turned in. Students who try their best and turn in quality work want your feedback. They want to know how they did. The quicker you grade the assignments, the more immediate the feedback, the more meaningful that feedback is going to be. Students this year are going to use their Haiku ePortfolios to publish their completed projects, universal blogs, and their best work from year to year. All projects, photos, and other finished products will only be featured as links on the ePortfolios to save space and streamline their data. Student documents should be converted to PDF files or Google Docs and only be accessible to those with the link for public viewing. Once students get ready to graduate, they will convert their ePortfolio to a Wikispace or Google Doc so it may be accessed by the public for future display of portfolios or you know, if they're applying for a job uh, or an internship. Okay, here's a few more notes about student assignments online. When you are asking students to do an assignment in Google Docs, first of all, you want to provide them with a template. By providing them with a template, uh, you're going to have work that is more organized uh, and uniform, which will be easier for you and the students. So let's say, for example, you want your students to do Cornell notes for a class. You provided them with a copy of the Cornell notes template. Next, though, you want to make sure that the students don't start their work directly on the template. If they do this, then their work is going to be on your template, and that's going to mess you up. So instead, you want to make sure that you are very explicit with your directions and showing them how to rename the file uh, after they make it their own copy. So they need to make a copy first, then give it a name. So they make a copy, they rename it. So when they rename the document, uh, for your uh, sanity, you want to make sure that in the document name it has your class name and the assignment name and lastly the student's name in the document. Later for submission, if no one else is going to necessarily edit their document, some English teachers may want to have the ability to edit or to give feedback on the document, but let's say they're just turning in this document, everything is done, you want to make sure that they download the document as a PDF file before they submit it to you in the Dropbox. So now that they've done that, let's assume that Mason has completed his Cornell notes. He has converted that file to a, a PDF file. Okay, and he's ready to submit it to you. Also, many of you have asked about universal blogs. Students can use blogs for your class to keep up with the many projects and assignments that they're doing for your class. Um, I've suggested that students can use Wikispaces. Wikispaces is free, it can be made private, or it can be uh, released to the public. Uh, Wikispaces has uh, lots of different file formats and media that you can insert into the Wikispace. Users can comment on the Wikispaces, or you can disable comments if you like. So Wikispaces is about just as diverse as Google Docs but it's a little more secure and as the administrator you can control the pages a little better as opposed to Google Docs.